Hi there! Welcome to the comparison of five Korean sports bows. Um, today is uh, Saturday. The last two weeks it's been raining a lot, so the garden here is more or less a swamp. And um, yeah, neighbors are very active outside, so morning the law and so on. And uh, so apologies for any background noises. So. I hope that I have a few hours so that I can take the videos, but yeah, let's start. And before we really start, um, I would like to, um, to read <laughs> something uh, that I have just um, compiled from the internet information research. And um, so it's about the Korean bow. And Korean bow is uh, in Korean language gakung. And um, I think it's meant the horn bow, the gakung. So bow is only gung. And um, this was the original bow that uh, people have used for about 2000 years in Korea. So the composite bow, originally with water buffalo, a horn was a reflex bow and uh, was the most important weapon um, for the Koreans um, to fight against the Chinese uh, invaders and dynasties and nomadic people, recorded from the first century BC. A number of Korean leaders have been said to be masters in archery. Under Joseon, archery reached its zenith and um, was the main martial event tested during the military portion of the national service exam. So this was a quite important step and we can imagine why. So it was, archery was very important for other folks too. Um, and held annually from 1392 to 1894. Um, so the Joseon dynasty, look that up, was from 1392 to 1897. I don't know why they didn't, they do that the last three years. And uh, from 1897 um, it was the empire Korea. So they switched from a kingdom to an empire. 1910 to 1951, um, the Japanese uh, uh, have ruled the Korea and called this country also Joseon. Um, but this is something different then, of course. In 1899, uh, Prince Heinrich of Prussia uh, was invited by the emperor Gojong and was deeply impressed by the demonstration of Korean martial arts, especially the archery portion. He's, he's, uh, he suggested uh, making the art into a sport. The emperor, convinced by the idea, um, decreed let people enjoy archery to develop their physical strength and established an archery club. In subsequence, the Korean bow was standardized. And this is the standard, standardization. And I put in here uh, the bigger picture so that you can see it as well. Um, basically, we have five segments and I use my um, training ball for this demonstration. Um, one segment is the handle from here to there. Then we have a segment where we have um, the um, maximum point of this bending here, of the uh, uh, reflex, and then another section and this is 0.55 ya. Ya is uh, the Korean um, um, ya, Einheit, <laughs> you know, so what they measure. And uh, in it's 30.3 uh, centimeters approximately and uh, roughly 12 inches. So this is then 0.55 ya up to there, then another uh, 0.55 ya until here. And the horn bow had then a transition area and it was uh, like a cut, like this, like a V. And um, then the, uh, the zia section started. Um, they don't call it zia, um, so they have different names. So this point here, now I need to look this up, is the hanugum or ogum. And um, the transition area to the other material is then Zamzami. And this point here where we have uh, the string bridge is then called Dogoji. 
and then we have the tip. And um, now it comes about the measurements. In total, the bow has a length then of 4.2 yard. Um, and now it depends. Uh, you can, um, so I have measured this then, or translated this into inch, would be a 50.4 long bow. Um, I always measure the length from uh, the knocking point. But the boyer, of course, uh, will uh, build this tip as well. So I'm not 100% sure to which point they measure. So I measure from here. And so my measurements regarding um, the reference are all um, regarding the length knock to knock. So you can estimate a few uh, centimeters more for the total length of the bow. But in the end, if you stick in the same uh, format, then you have the same results approximately. So yes, and this is a standard Korean um, sports bow. The reason why I do not uh, yet compare these um, sports bows to my war bow from uh, Lukas Navalny or uh, from He Kyong Archery, the Josian war bow, is that I do not have any references about the war bows. Uh, so I cannot tell you, and these are very two different bows, so they're not even alike. Um, I cannot tell you how close they are, or if they aren't. And that's the reason why I cannot take these bows into this comparison. So I compare only the sports bows. All right. Now, before we go into the details for the bows, um, I want to show you the typical uh, quiver set. I have um, this quiver set from Yeo Chan Jung, and um, he has built also a very special limited edition. It's um, the Black Tiger edition. And uh, I thought this is so cool, I need to have it. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so I'm really happy about this set. And um, this is the quiver itself with a pouch here for extra arrows. And you see this is very solid here um, with the fixings of metal and screwed. So very nicely done. Uh, it's really cool. It comes with belts and another belt and the bow quiver or bow holder. So I know uh, various bow holders, so I always struggle a bit with this expression. It holds the bow, yes, but it's also some kind of quiver. It's closed in the bottom and uh, flexible here. It has only a one-point ridging, means it's very flexible. And uh, in this case, we have a rotating carabiner and uh, so it never gets stuck somehow. Benefit is that you can move it in any direction you, you need. Yeah, very cool. All right, and uh, furthermore, regarding the equipment, we have here the male ring. It's a sukagi in Korean language. And if you think of how shall it be used, well, it's quite easy. So in this case, it's uh, relatively loose. But you have here this uh, leather band and it gets thicker and thicker. And so you just tighten it with a leather strip and then it's good to go. Now it's sitting solidly. And you take the string like that and then you pull. Very comfortable. It's meant to uh, be used for heavy bows. Um, but yeah, <laughs> uh, it was, uh, I got this um, ring as a present from Kijung. And it's, it was before I had my first uh, proper fitting uh, thumb ring from uh, Bamboo Archery. And so this was the first ring that really fit to my thumb. And it's a very cool ring. Yeah, 
This ring has been uh, given as a present from the original owner and I think he has given this as a present from his master. Then he has um, given it as a present to Ki Jung and Ki Jung has given it as a present to me. So this ring cannot be purchased. <laughs> All right. And I have created this pouch for the ring. Good. And this is the equipment and um, arrows, just before we go into more details, um, Korean archers uh, nowadays shoot with blunt points. And that's the reason why um, if you use blunt points, the, um, the inlays here don't get scratched you know? and always look good. And you see, it doesn't slide out. Yeah? Um, because the targets they have uh, are made of some kind of, yeah, it's some kind of uh, dense fabric. Um, it's around two meters, more square two meters. And um, you have then the target inside and I have um, printed out a smaller version um, going down to a distance of seven meters. And uh, I can show you in a bit, it's very small if it's at a distance of seven meters. And it's very small if the full size target is standing at 145 meters. And this is exactly the distance they shoot. At the last Korean archery days, um, I participated end of May this year. Um, I have tested with a, a Manchu bow if I can reach the target. And uh, indeed, the Korean bows um, threw the arrows further away than the Manchu did. Um, even with, I, I took first um, easier arrows with the Manchu bow and it was far before the target. And then I used heavier arrows, they flew better, but even that, not close. And uh, with even this uh, training bow that has only nominal 30 pounds, I reached more than 150, 45. All right, so this uh, is what the bow is, the design is uh, about, you know, to throw the arrows far away to hit the enemy before they are close. Good. All right, um, now let's check um, the specs of the bows I have. And um, I will need to verify, as always, the strength. But let's start with my Dong Gigung. And uh, this bow has nominal 30 pounds. It has um, a length from knock to knock of 51 inches. Um, strong, it's 46.5. Uh, normal strength I said already, 30, and max draw is 31. Um, brace height is 5.5 inches. And um, arrow pass has a width of 29 millimeters. The weight is 290 gram. And um, then I measure the dugoji to tip. From here to there, it's 8.5. Um, the handle length is three inches and um, the bending length in total is 39.5. So it's a relatively long bending length. And where we have it in the hands, we can take the first measurement. So. At 28, it's 30.2 and uh, currently, I didn't say that before, we have 24 degree Celsius and 46% humidity. In Korea, indeed, it's more moist than we have it here. Uh, in the lowest values are about 60%. So we are below that. And so we have 32. I need this value then later to calculate um, the correct arrow weight for the speed test. Then we jump directly to 31. Oh. 35, 9, 6, so roughly 36. 
And this is exactly um, what, uh, what it's always meant about. So if um, Koreans tell you the strength of the bow, they mean at 31 inches or precisely 31.3. Um, so you see that this bow has indeed 36 pounds. Um, so the 36 pound, where does it come from? Um, as I said, we have here low humidity uh, compared to Korea. And so um, this might have the effect. Yeah, so I've recognized that quite often with the biocomposite bows uh, very much and with horn bows. So wherever you have horn, its direction is stronger. And if it's laminated, it's a bit less. But um, if I order a 30 pound bow, I expect that I have indeed on my finger around five pound more today, six pound more. And the Korean style is uh, quite long draw, so um, you have the 31 inches. All right, so the bow is stronger than we think, or like it's written on it. Oh, maybe the hole, the bow holds here somehow. Oh, I'm sorry. So. Next one is the Yanbian. Um, the Yanbian is um, a bow that has not been created in Korea. It's a Chinese bow. And uh, so this bow looks a bit different. Um, and I'll tell you a bit why that is. It's not much different, but a few details. So length 50.5 inches unstrung and strung is 46. Um, we have a, a normal strength of 36 pound, um, a max draw of 31 and um, the brace height is 5.8 inches. The handle uh, shape is a bit different and um, then the arrow pass has a width of 27.5 millimeters. We have ray skin here wrapped around so that's the, the bit more than uh, with others. Um, weight is 295 uh, gram and uh, the Dogoji to tip has a length of 9 inches which is uh, I can tell you that already the closest we can get to the references. Um, the handle length is in the middle, in the in average, 3.5 inches, and we have a bending length of 38 inches in total, like that. And indeed, the bow feels quite strong, although it doesn't look like it. So we have at 28. Thirty-eight oh six and a thirty-one. <laughs> Let's see. Forty-two six two. So again, you see uh, an increase in the nominal. Um, yeah, although I do not know if the Chinese also um, refer to the 31 inches, so I'm not sure about that. So it's always better to measure yourself than you know it. <laughs> okay. All right, next one in the row is the authentic KTB1. Um, so the, this bow has been reviewed by Armin. Oh, sorry, there is a fly. Come on, fly, go away. Um, this bow has been reviewed by Armin two years ago. And uh, I have asked Armin if I could have the KTB2. And um, it turned out that the KTB2 is lost, sadly. And uh, he had sent me the KTB1 because he thought it was the right one. And um, okay, we have here the KTB1. And KTB2 um, 
I have received, but uh, Freddy will create a new one. And uh, so the winner of the comparison of today will then be compared to the KTB2 because um, according to Armin, this bow was his favorite compared to the KTB1 and the Cheonji that comes in a bit. All right, so this bow, as you can see, looks different from the handle. Um, according to Armin, the KTB1 and KTB2 are only different regarding the handle section. Um, the rest is the same. Um, we have here, oh, just a moment, we have here a length unstrung 50.5 inches and strung it's 46. Um, nominal, I think it was 30, but nothing's written on it. And um, we have a max draw of 31.6. I think this is depending on the Korean units, unit system. So 31.6, okay. And um, we have uh, a brace height of six and a half inches. The arrow pass is 28.5 uh, and has also ray skin. And it's a bit difficult because it's all very symmetrically and you never know, do you have the bottom up or top up? So I have uh, marked a knocking point here so that I use it the same way, but could be that way too. All right, and um, the dogoji to tip is 7.8, always for both sides. No? So. And um, handle length, more difficult to measure here, is 4.3 inches. And we have a bending length of 38.5. Profile looks like this. And um, indeed, it feels like a 30 pound bow. Let me take here the measurements. Mm. The string is thicker than for the others. 28. 33.96, so roughly 34. 34. And for the 31. Forty-one-five-six. So you see, it's as strong as the um, Donggi Gung, but um, at thirty-one inches, this bow is stronger than the Donggi Gung. So this is the KTB. Next one is then the. Um, Cheonji. Cheonji has a number on it, so 30 pound bow, and it has a sports grip. Um, originally there was a band 8 uh, wrapped around it and I've exchanged it. It looks better, I think. And uh, yeah, very nice. Ah, the difference here, I didn't mention it before, the KTB1 has uh, traditional knots that are uh, attaching then the string bridges, whereas the Cheonji doesn't have it. And um, the Cheonji has a flat back and the KTB a rounded back. So. The Cheonji um, has horn. It's the only one that has horn uh, on the belly. And uh, right the measurements. 50.5 inches long from knock to knock, uh, strung 46.5, we have nominal strength of 30 at 31.3 inches, and a max draw of 32. Um, Aero pass is 25.5 millimeters, brace height is 6 inches, and we have a weight of 370 grams, so it's the heaviest we have. Um, this is because of the horn, I think. And we have uh, a dogoji length here of 8 inches, handle 3.4, and we have a bending length of 
inches. Right, the strength. So if you wonder why I have uh, done here two, um, this is when I later um, shoot with the pole arrow. Um, this does not have a snug fit and so it doesn't move. At 28, 34, 1, 6. And at 31, it's not the max draw, but my max draw. Yep. 39.6. So, and last in the row is the Kaya Black Cat, uh, nominal 50 pound and um, has a length knock to knock 50 inches, strung is 44.8, so nearly 45. Um, we have the nominal strength of 50, um, the max draw of 31, um, mace height precise 6.3 and um, arrow path of 30 millimeters. Um, weight is 360, so 10 gram lighter than the Chionji. And uh, the Goji to um, tip, we have 8.2, handle 3.2, and bending length 38.7. And the strength, no knocking point set so far because I shoot this bow currently um, the Turkish style. <laughs> 50 pound. Uh, I can pull it, but I cannot uh, shoot much with the straw weight. So 28 we have here. 43.8. So what's eye striking is that this is the only bow that is not heavier than said or claimed. And now I give my best to reach the 31. Fifty point eight eight. So this is exactly what they say. Right, so if we have a look at what we, what we have just measured, we see, um, and now um, I have here the table, the reference um, for a 48 inch horn bow, or what I have measured here from this table, uh, at the bow of 50 0.4 inches, you see that all bows are approximately all right. So my uh, donkey gung is a tiny bit longer, but uh, yeah, this is, so they are all fine. They have all the correct length. Um, the dogoji to tip length is indeed smaller than in the reference. So calculated for both sides, top and uh, bottom, it should be 10.8 inches and none of the bows have it. The closest is the um, Yan Bian and the others follow. So then the next would be the Dungi Gung, then the Kaya uh, Black Cat, then the Chionji and last row the KTB one. Um, why is it? Don't know. <laughs> yeah. This is what I measure. Handle length uh, calculated as 2.4. So the handle length had been very small these days, uh, the past days, and nowadays handles are big larger, a bit larger. I think this is because um, people may have grown a bit and um, a lot of archers are larger than 200, 300 years ago. Hmm? And so, the handle has grown. 
The bending length was only 26.4 inches, which is clear because if you have a larger doguchi to tip length and um, but you have a smaller handle. Yeah, I don't know. The bending length was approximately 26.4 and we all have around 38 to 39.5. So the bending length is more or less the same for all bows. Chapter one, design. Um, the first question is um, how close are the designs to the reference? And um, I say they are all very close. Yes, we have a bit of deviation, but this is totally fine. And so um, same like shoe sizes, not every 37 shoe is just like the other. So we have um, a bit deviation and it's perfectly fine. So they are all matching the references. And regarding the bending length, mm, maybe um, I've measured the bending length to the point of the transition area. And um, so maybe this extra material that gets into it, it is bending as well. So then my bending length calculation is not correct. So we take out the bending length section and it's like it is, yeah. So <laughs> and uh, handle section, just mentioned, handles got bigger and what does it take? If you have a small handle, no one can grab the bow. All right, and um, this is also point two. Uh, how much deviation do we have in size? None. And um, the only thing we can distinguish is um, the Dogoji to tip length. And uh, there the Yanbian is the closest to the measurements and um, followed by the Dungigung and then the black hat. It's very, very small. And so since these bows are all very close together, we need to take the very small bits to distinguish. Ratio between um, the bow length and um, the maximum draw weight is, um, ah, yeah, they're all very close. So we, we have the first place uh, for KTB1 and Gionji um, because they have 0.63 ratio. Then it's followed by the black cat of 0.62 and um, then third place because they both have the same, Dungi Gung and Yan Bian. All right, this is chapter one.